Hey everyone, welcome back to chapter one, section three. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna go over properties of absolute value graphs. Mainly, I'm gonna go over um, identifying the vertex, axis, or line of symmetry. Sometimes it's written as axis of symmetry, sometimes it's written as line of symmetry. It's the exact same thing. I'm also gonna go over whether it's a ver uh, the vertex is at a max or min, and um, your x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and then the domain and range, and we're gonna write it in both forms that we learned. Um, so that being said, let's get started. I got these three examples, so uh, looking at this one down here, remember the vertex is the highest or the lowest point, so it's gonna be this point right here, and at x comma y, that's four comma zero. So my vertex is four comma zero. And then my axis or line of symmetry is what's the imaginary line that you can draw down the middle of the graph and, and symmetrically cut it in half. And that will be right here. So where is that going through? Well, you'll notice that's going through 4 on the x-axis. So all you have to do is say x equals 4. And you notice that the line of symmetry goes through the x-coordinate of the vertex. So whatever it is, if um, my vertex is like 100 comma 2, my line of symmetry is x equals 100. Um, so yeah, uh, is the vertex a max or min point? Well, the graph is opening up, right? So this is the lowest point possible. It's just going to go up uh, forever after that. So that is a minimum point. And then identify the x-intercept and then I put it in parentheses, the S, does it have more than one x-intercept? It only has one, and that's right here. Where is that at? That's negative 4, 0. That happens to be the vertex as well. I mean positive 4, 0, excuse me. Um, so 4, 0. Then the y-intercept, um, where does it touch in the y-axis? Um, right there. That's 0, 4. All right, so the x-intercept has, has 0 for the y-coordinate, and the y-intercept has 0 for the x-coordinate, um, so 0, comma, 4. And so now we're going to write our domain in interval notation and inequality notation. Remember, domain moves side to side. So moving side to side, it is unbounded. It's going to the left freely. It's going to the right freely. So that is all real numbers. How do you write that? as uh, interval notation, you say negative infinity to positive infinity, and they're both in parentheses, okay? And um, let's, let's see if I can clean this parenthesis up. Remember, parentheses can't touch, bracket you can touch, you can never touch infinity. So how would I write that in inequality notation? Um, I would put the all real numbers symbol, and I would just write that. Now for the range, the range is going up and down. So it can go up, but it can't go down in the negatives, right? And so um, the range, what is the y value of the vertex? And that's zero, right? Because it's at four comma zero. So it's really, really tempting to say y is greater than or equal to four because you see it's right there at four. Remember, it's at four in the x-axis. So if it's on the x-axis, it doesn't really matter. It needs to be, what's the number where it's at on the y-axis because the range is y numbers. So this is y is greater than or equal to um, zero. So that's the inequality one y is greater than or equal to zero. And remember, sometimes in inequality notation, you see the set builder notation combined with it. So I might as well just write that. Um, and uh, the interval notation, if it's greater than or equal to zero, it's going from zero in a bracket to infinity. And the infinity is in parentheses. And so that's everything I wanted to identify in number one. And if you're hearing a bunch of, uh, you know, chimes in the background, beeping, whatever, that's just, I got iPads getting sent um, notifications or whatever. If you can't hear it, then just ignore what I just said. Um, 
Okay, so this next one, where's the vertex at? The vertex is right here. So I'm at negative 1, 2. So that's negative 2, comma, 0. And so remember what I said about the axis of symmetry. It's just the x-coordinate of the vertex. You just say x equals negative 2. That's because if you drew a vertical line going through negative 2 on the x-axis, that would symmetrically cut in half this graph. Okay? And so is that a max or min point? The graph's going down, so that's the highest point possible. So that's the max. Uh, X-intercepts, let's see here. It touches the x-axis at negative two, so I need to say it as negative two comma zero. And then are there any y-intercepts? The zero doesn't look good. Are there any y-intercepts? Um, let's go back and look at the graph. Uh, yeah, it touches through the y-axis right here. That's at negative four. So x-coordinate is zero, and y-coordinate is negative four. All right, and so what's my domain? Well, even though it's opening down, it's still moving left and right freely. So my domain is all real numbers. So in inequality notation, I'll write the r. And then in the interval notation, I'll use the infinity symbols. So negative infinity, comma, positive infinity, both in parentheses. And so that covers the domain. So now we just need to cover the range. Well, the range is going down. The graph is going down. It can't go up past uh, the zero. So last time it was opening up and y is greater than or equal to zero. This one, y is less than or equal to zero. So I'm gonna go say that on the inequality first y is less than or equal to zero. And then, like I said, sometimes you see the set builder notation thrown in with it. So you just use those brackets and say y such that y is less than or equal to zero. Um, and then in interval notation, it's going down to negative infinity. So you have to say that first and zero comes second because that's greater than negative infinity. And zero is still in a bracket, negative infinity is still in parentheses. So that's everything to say on, on number two. So number three, what's the vertex at? The vertex, it's on the negative side again, negative two comma one. So vertex negative two comma one. So that axis of symmetry, x equals negative two. All right, see, so go over to the graph draw your vertical line and it should go through negative 2 on the x-axis. The, the axis of symmetry is always going to go through the vertex um, for a symmetrical graph like absolute value or quadratic. Um, is the vertex a max or a min point? Well, we can see that this is the lowest point. It's going to go up, so that makes it a minimum. So if it's opening up, it has a min. If it's opening down, it has a max. You can just think of it like that if you want. Um, but just look at the graph if you uh, don't feel like memorizing anything. Um, X-intercepts and Y-intercepts. Well, does it touch the X-axis at all? No, it does not. Uh, does it touch the Y-axis at all? Yes, it does at 7. So X-intercepts, none. And then it touches at 7, so 0 comma seven and so identify the domain and range the domain for all absolute value problems whether it opens up or down whether the graph skinny or fat um, all real numbers okay because it's moving side to side uh, freely so it can move left and right so I'm gonna say negative infinity positive infinity or all real numbers However, the range is always going to be restricted some way or another. It can't go up or it can't go down, um, depending on which way it's opening. So it's opening up. What's the lowest point? One. The lowest point was one of the y coordinates. So I can say that y is greater than or equal to one, and then I can throw the y such that in front of it. And 
for the interval notation, it's going up, so it's starting at negative 1, I mean positive 1, and going up forever to positive infinity. So 1's in a bracket, infinity's in a parenthesis. So yeah, range, use the y coordinate of the vertex for a, you know, one of your boundaries. It might be the left boundary or it might be the right boundary, um, depending on which way the graph is going. But yeah, so 1 to infinity should make sense, I would hope. And so that's going to draw these notes to a close. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.